And Lejean Witherspoon. What's up, LJ? What's going on? How you guys doing, man? <laughs> I'm doing all right, man. It's nice to see I, you. I'd like to see you. You look great, and I love Thank your you. old school spin on uh, everything. Because I'm, I consider, I call stuff Atari still. So I, uh, I hope that everyone will uh, enjoy <laughs> yeah. our cassette that comes out this Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the, the cassette tapes, man. They're making a comeback. Uh, yes, sir. How you been, man? Uh, you know what? I'm hanging in, man. The, you know, for the comics, the gigs are coming back a little bit, so there's a, a little sanity. You know, I, I, have a, I have a stage to rage on, so I'm g getting a lot of the frustration out. But uh, I'm more worried about you guys, man. These, this is crazy. The music business is like first one, first one to go down, last one to come back. Absolutely. Uh, I'm glad you say that you know a lot of people don't know i don't know if a lot of people understand that me as an artist i got to actually talk to jamie Josh of hate breed the other day the first time i've talked in an interview zoom setting with another artist uh, -huh. uh besides yourself you know you're the second one so then you understand to ask the question like that because every day i wake up and i'm like you know what are we going to do because you're right we are going to be the last ones that are able to uh to have that setting, that uh, that safe setting. I don't care if we have to do it where we all have to have astronaut suits on at one point in time, but we're not to that level yet. So you're absolutely right, we can't do it. But luckily enough, we have outlets and avenues like this right here, this Zoom and everyone out there seeing it. And we're gonna still release this album. And hopefully this will buffer this crazy obscure time that we are in our lives, man. Music is a healer and I still believe that. It is a healer, and it's and it's not only a, just a, it's a healer for the for the listener. It's a healer for you guys. You know, I know the feeling I get when I'm on stage performing, and it's the same thing Absolutely. for you guys. And and without the audience, it's it's just not the same. Um, but you know, we, we'll take what we can get. I know you've got a a live stream coming up uh, also on Friday that I I want to talk to you about. But while we're talking about trying to keep things safe and the astronaut suits and all that stuff, <laughs> have you seen this these bubbles? this bubble concert that went down the flaming lips did no not at all I seen hey, let's um let me see if you uh, if you could see this um uh, i'll show you a little um a, a photo of it so they <laughs> they, they did this show oh, wow with, yeah and it's all it, the bands in bubbles and the audiences in bubbles so i don't do you think seven dust bubble bath show maybe in the future Matt, you know listen uh, I've never seen anything like that before, but, you know, I, I wouldn't be afraid. I'm just, you know, there's always going to be that one guy or chick that's going to try to bust it with something and pop it. Oh, yeah. Then, then we got to stop the show. <laughs> 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 yeah plus you know what plus and this i wanted to talk to you about this too with your the way your drummer hits those drums i mean that bubble wouldn't stand a chance it would be cool just to see it in uh you know fall on him after he poked the hole into <laughs> yeah. it and still be rocking it so, yeah. <laughs> I really, you know what on serious note i don't what do you think what do you think is going to happen uh when are we going to get to a safe spot again uh, I, I'm a true believer, and I know that everyone has a different side, but I'm one that I have a family, and I have, you know, we all have families, but I have to be safe, and I'm doing the right thing by trying to, you know, I'm, I'm wearing the mask, and I want to be the one in my family to be the one to make sure if there is a reason for us to be safe that we're doing the right thing by doing it, you know what I mean? We've lucky, knock on wood, no one in my home or my family has caught COVID because we've been doing the right thing, so I want to continue that so we can make that hopefully across everywhere if people understand that maybe we can get back to some type of normalcy yeah well lj i think what it is it's it's just what it's up to everybody's sense sensitivities and and again like what you said like you're trying to you know your priority is keeping your family safe from this mm -hmm. thing and now there's other people who have gone out bands have gone out and done little runs like i just saw blackberry smoke uh, yeah. here in new jersey they and there's there's a little outdoor run that a couple bands have done so it's just a matter of obviously one what's your sensitivity to the virus and then two yeah. financially can can you afford to go out and just do four or five shows you know it's like how right. much money could i afford to lose on this run right now let me know what you just said blackberry smoke oh, i love those guys georgia boys where we started from now listen now seven dust months a couple of months ago we were in the talks of uh what we call a nashville run and that's a friday saturday sunday and then going back home on Monday, but these were in the towns that were allowing that type of setup. Now that all went to shit after everything kind of lost the bottom again. So hopefully we're gonna build back up to that. But to let you know, we're not 
standing back. We're just waiting to make sure that everyone's going to be safe. We don't, you know what I mean? It's, it's very important because I look at it like this. I look out in that crowd now. I just turned 48 on October 3rd. I have a three beautiful. I have three beautiful children. And now when I go to a concert, I see that kid that was at the first Seven Us concert and he has four kids. Now his kids have kids. Now he might be a granddad. I have to think about that and put that in consideration before we have the chance to go back out there again. Because over 20 something years, we don't have fans, we have family. And that's what's crazy, LJ. Like, I can't believe this is your 13th studio album from Seven yeah. Dust. I, mean, I still think of you guys as like a newer band, but 13 albums. And I guess, you know, I guess what they say is true. You know, the great ones make it look easy. Like, the time has just oh. sort of passed. And, and now you have another <clears throat> classic coming out this Friday. You know, I've, I've lived with the album now for about a week and a half. And it's like, oh, wow. yep, they did it again. <laughs> the back well, with another you, great album. It's crazy. Uh, luckily, we were blessed enough to be able to to record this album pre COVID pandemic crazy world opening up to everyone's eyes, and so we were really focused on the music and what was going on in that magical time. And then everything happened afterwards, and we were sitting there with this album and not knowing what the world was going to allow us to do. And uh, it was even mentioned for us to stop and don't put this album out until 2021. There's no way. As a, as a band, uh, us grown men, we know that we have a mission to do. And we made sure that we put this album out. And that's why it's coming out Friday. So I, I like to say thank everyone out there for the support and stay safe. We're going to make it through this. I feel we're going to make it through this, you know, eventually. And even when we have to go to Florida and do this damn uh, streaming thing, Without y'all being there, I'm going to make sure that we each and every one of us put our heart and our soul into that show and try to make you feel like we're in your living room. <laughs> it's going to be weird. We're going to do it. Yeah. Oh, hey, listen, I've seen you guys do it many times. I, you know, there's there's no doubt you're going to do it again. Um, let me just ask you quick about the, the cover. So is that that's the cover? Like there's not your name's not on it. The name of the record's not on it. Is that is that correct? Yeah, no, no, we don't. I think I think they know what we look like about this point, man. Uh, <laughs> the cover is definitely the Stones, and you don't need to see us anymore. I don't think so. <laughs> but I mean, we're not even the name old. Seven Dust is on there. <laughs> we're just getting old. But let me tell you a reason I really uh, gravitated towards this. You know what it reminded me of? The artwork you sent me back, and you, we talk about old school. That's why I love you so much. And it just made me feel like a Pink Floydish era, mm -hmm. and uh, and. And so that's that was something I thought was very strong and, and something that you will remember. Me being a kid, those are album covers are always remembered and always made me think about something. So hopefully this album will, you know, kind of trigger that. So you're going to take off in, probably in the next day or two to down from Kansas City down to Florida and put together this live stream, which also happens this Friday, um, the, what is it, the 23rd of October, and it's yes. the only 2020 concert um, from Seven Dust. So can you give us a little preview of what the fans can expect uh, from that, and, and how can they see it? Weirdness. Okay, so first off, I know that we're all flying in, and we, we're going to a disclosed location. Uh, I've already seen pictures. It's a beautiful setup. Are you going There's to the, uh, the to... NBA bubble? Is that where you guys are going? Oh, no. Hey, <laughs> we're close to that. We <laughs> okay. can't go in there. I don't know where them dudes have been. So listen, <laughs> we're going to our own bubble. But we're really close to that bubble. So we go in, and it's only the band. I think three crew members. Y'all yeah, have seen the list. Three crew members. Uh, the filming crew, three, all masked. Everyone tight. No one else can be. Because Union ran, too. So somebody pulled that plug. And they could blink. Somebody could blink wrong. <laughs> yeah. plug, it'll get <laughs> that live show. Be like, <laughs> like, we can't hear him. Oh wait, we can't see him because that guy over there got mad at somebody. So oh, you don't mess with the very, union, man. Yeah, not at all. So we're gonna be very. <laughs> I can only imagine, man. You know, it, I could. I hope that it's gonna be fun because we haven't seen each other. The band we haven't seen each other for seven months. So it'll be good for us to be back together. It's gonna be funny because we've not played these songs in a long time. But it's always. We've been a band for so long, man. We get back in there, and it's just like a, a machine that gets back to work. So I'm excited about that, and hopefully everyone can enjoy themselves. I'm going to try to take it a little easy. If you're home with your grandmas and stuff, and I'm, I'm doing this right here, don't knock nothing over. Be cool. Have a good time. Be safe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't knock, knock anything valuable over, at least, right? Right. Hey, man, you got, and you came out of the gate swinging 
with um, a cover of uh, Soundgarden, The Day I Tried to Live. Like, I love the stones on you, man. You just, you're like, yeah, we're, we're coming right out of the gate, and I, I'm going to tackle Chris Cornell. And, you know, it's been, what, about four years now since he's been gone, but it still seems, you know, so fresh. Um, did yes. you have a backup plan for this, or did you, did you, did you say, we'll record it, but I don't know if it's going to go on? Like, that doesn't, not taking away from what you can do vocally, because you're incredible, but, you know, tackling Chris, man. And that's that's a whole other ball game, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Some of us, everyone knows out there uh, that we're not known to be like a cover band. Yeah. But at this point in our career, we talk as a band and said, "Hey, man, wouldn't it be fun to do a cover song on this album?" Yeah, of course. And and with us, it's hard because we all have opinions, and everyone, uh, every there's songs coming from all kind of directions. We should do this. We should do this. We should do this. You know, Morgan was like, "We should do my Sharona," and I'm like, "Absolutely." I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Because it's a drum song. All right, sure. I like the song, but I don't know what it means. I'm not singing that. So, uh, uh, thankfully, Elvis Bassett, our producer, which I feel like is a sixth member of the band, came in and said, uh, what about Day I Tried to Live? And to me, and of, all, of course, all of us were like, wow, that's a sound garden. Yeah, that's great. I said, it could have been any sound garden song or any Chris Cornell song, but I honestly looked at him and I said, well, who's going to sing it? And uh, they, <laughs> everyone laughed and said, well, you. And let me tell you what. To answer your question, it was probably for for a few days. I felt like, wow, how can I even, how can I compare? What can I do to? Okay, first off, I can't do that. I can't think of it that way. I can't yeah. go into doing this song to someone that I pay so much homage to that I feel like we wouldn't be in the the world of rock the way we are if it wasn't for his talent. I can't go in and sing it like him. I have to go in and sing it like Lejean Witherspoon from Seven of Us sings it. Yeah. And that's what I was able to do. But what I did was I waited to the last uh, track of this album to sing the song. And I went in as a grown man and I thought about his legacy. I thought about the way he influenced me. I thought about the times that I saw him in concert and how I was amazed. And then I thought about his passing and how he passed. And then I thought about his family. And I thought about my family and I thought about him as a man and I thought about his kids and what they think about their father and all those things, those emotions really, whew, it, uh, it resonated with me. Yeah. And so that's when I went and I did that song and I didn't do it any other way than the way that I felt coming from me. Yeah, and that you know what, man, that says that all that just says so much about why you're such a great performer, man. I, I love watching Seven Dust play live. Yeah. Um I, you know, I, I, we, we, I think we missed each other last time in, in, in LA when you were playing with Pop Evil. I was there that night. Oh, yeah. But, um, but I always, I love to see you on the festivals because for people who've never seen Seven Dust at a festival, you guys are like the kings of the festivals. Yeah. Is there, is there a difference between uh, preparing for a festival show as opposed to, you know, a regular a theater show or a club show? Man, for me, uh, I know that a, a festival is going to be the masses more than the theater, but for me, it's the same energy. Uh, I just try to move the crowd wherever. It's amazing, the festival settings, though, uh, to be able to, to move that many people. Yeah. Uh, I love it. I, I remember the last time I got to hang out with you as a festival was here at Rock Fest in KC, That's my right. hometown. So uh, I look forward to those days again. But yeah, festivals are beautiful, man, because you're not just seeing one style of music. You're seeing everybody. For me, all, a festival is always like a, uh, I, I say, like a family reunion of sorts or like a, a, a summertime thing where normally we're always on the roads in different places. We all get together at a festival and it's, a, it's always a good time. I can't, I pray to get back to that day. Yeah, yeah. It's more more than just getting up and and playing your set. It's it's re, you know uh, regrouping with, with people you haven't seen in a year or two because uh -huh. everybody's schedules are so busy. Of course, unfortunately, not now. Did you uh, did you did you get to ride out to Sturgis this year? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> no, you did not do that. Oh, did you, you gave me the whole rap about the the family. I asked you if you went to Sturgis, but but being outside yeah, on the bike must would. be nice. Yeah, I normally would, man. You know, and a Johnny Dare, you know Johnny, with my great friend of course. Dixon. We, we go, we go to Sturgis. We take the bus to take the bikes down. But actually, everyone kind of stayed back this time, man. I, I, I do. I really believe to the fact that you know people are uh, really being cautious and you know doing the right thing and not taking the chance of a uh, you know endangering their family and other people. I, I far that's my opinion. That's why I didn't go. I, I couldn't afford to go down there and, and uh, take the chance. Uh, you know, just kind of, you know, just trying to be safe and doing the right thing. Did you get? Did you? Yeah, have I missed the, it. I, what a great time, though. I missed it. Did you have the bike out at all this summer? You must have been out riding now. 
Not really. Man, see, don't make me feel bad. <laughs> I, uh, I've been looking. I'm, at I'm telling Dare, man. <laughs> uh, please, I've been looking. At, I've been riding my Swagtron. <laughs> it's my bike, the little yeah. electric one. My motorcycles are man. They've been neglected this this COVID, man. I feel like they oh, called it, but I gotta go. <laughs> I'm gonna go out there and doctor him up. And I, I still ride in the winter. I ride all year round, so I'm gonna get back into bikes. You got one of those electric bikes? Yeah, I got we got we got a couple of those electric Swagtrons. They've been really good to us, and uh, they're fun. Me and the wife can ride them. You know, I don't. You know, I can pedal for a little while, but I really I, I just use the throttle the whole time. And I'm like, am I, I'm really not exercising, but this is still fun. It's like a little motorcycle. <laughs> well, I, well, that's the problem, LJ. I, I this the cat in, that sells bikes in my neighborhood. You know, I I bought all my bikes from him, and he goes, "You should try an electric bike." And I go, "What's that about?" He's like, "He goes, well, you can pedal, but then you know, if you need the motor, you can put the motor on." I'm like. I go, the minute I use the motor for the first time, I'll never use the pedals again. <laughs> you know ever, that. Ever. Only when the only when the motor dies is when you use yeah, the pedals. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I found myself, man, they closed down. So we have an Applebee's in our neighborhood. They closed down due to COVID. They couldn't last anyway because it's in a neighborhood. But I would ride. It was so fun to ride around the lake on our swag trons. And go to Applebee's and have a little drink and bring some food back home, man. Yeah. But you know those days are long gone. <laughs> but listen, I real we got to have an intervention for Morgan because he he real as much as I love watching uh, you guys do your thing live, I I'm always tense the whole show because he's back there and he weighs all of 112 pounds and he's hitting <laughs> those drums hard. I like I feel bad for him and the drums at the same time. And I think the fir first time I saw you guys live, I'm standing on the side of the stage in, in Kansas City, and he comes off after the last song, and he's in pain as he's walking by me. I go, you all right? He's like, I pop my shoulder out. I'm like, D you know, see, that's what I worry about, you know? It's like you're popping your shoulder out while, you, you know, it's, it's in, these are nice people. Just p play the drums reasonably, but he can't do that. <laughs> we, can't, we can't do that. That's the, we've always said Seven Dust was a sport from day one. And we go out there and we try to kill it every time, man. Uh, I know you do. I think now he might need to take it a little easier because we are old these days. Yeah. <laughs> and we had jam like we normally jam. But no, man, that's what we still do. And this weekend, we're going to do the same thing. I'm sure somebody will be hurt. Yeah. I just thought about I thought about rocking out. My neck started hurting just thinking about it. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> we're definitely going to do it, man. We, we have to bring it. That, I think it would be weird to see us in an element of not jamming because I feel like that's the mute. That's what our oh. music brings and that's the energy that we bring around each other and that's the energy that the family that we built together not fans the family out there that's the energy they did create even with them not being there that's i still feel their energy if that makes sense in a weird way i can feel it i can i i i, I anticipate what's going to happen because it's happened and i've seen it so it's like th this is this is cool it's just a good feeling to have to go into it yeah, no, I, I get what you mean, man, and and I, and I say that about Morgan, you know, because I know him very well, and it's it's the highest yeah. compliment to him because I'm I'm such a fan of his drumming, and I remember um, Haley Kramer, who was had not taken over as a drummer in Pop Evil yet, she but she was there that day watching because well, they knew they were going to transition her transition into her um, as, as a new drummer. She was the one that I think popped Morgan's shoulder back in place, and right there I said oh, well. Pop Evil made the perfect choice for. A drummer not only is she a hard hitter but she knows how to pop a shoulder back into place so that worked out Absolutely. well you know she's so cool man uh, to hang out with those guys uh pop evil guys are great man it was a uh, i miss the days of being out on the road i never thought that after all these years because normally you know i've taken advantage of being at home we would not be here we would be on the road not seeing our families so uh it's been very cool to actually be, be daddy be uh husband to the to the wife like i should be all the time but you know we're out there on the road so it's been a I've taken that and uh, I've loved it, but yeah, I miss all my partners out there, my brothers and sisters, out on the road, man. It's uh, it's been crazy to think that after all these years and you know all the things that you, you've done and you get to do, that now it's like we could still do music, but at what capacity and how, what way? What, you know, we, we don't have the answer to that. Like, what is it going to be like? 
Yeah. Well, you know, for, for all the fans of Seven Dust out there and, and just heavy music in general, obviously the best way to support all these guys is to buy the new album, Blood and Stone. It's out this Friday. Also, check out the live stream. You know, I can't recommend these guys more as a live band, even though it won't be the, you know, the ideal setting. They still bring a, tons of energy. Um, it's a great show. So um, that's all this Friday. It's Seven Dust Friday. Get to where you need to get to. Download the cassette tape. Get the live stream. <laughs> Wait, LJ's so watching you. I don't have my glasses, so I have to do this to see you real good. Oh, no, you don't. Want, listen, I, I, I don't need to be see on uh, that metal show. We were never in high def, and people used to go, "What's <laughs> up with that?" I, I go, "Why would you want to see the three of us in high definition? That's like watching porn in HD." I love, oh my God, I love it. <laughs> Man, thank you so much. Well, you made my, my whole day. This is, uh, You made me smile. I needed this for sure. Hey, you make a lot of people smile. And before I let you go, I just want to say condolences, man, to you and your family. I've had the pleasure of meeting them uh, on a few occasions. And you have an absolutely beautiful family. So big love thank to you, you and the family, my friend. Thank you. My wife told me to tell you hello, by the way. So uh, that means a lot for you to even to... Uh, to recognize and to say hello to them that's going to make their whole day too man yeah thank you and you keep doing what you're doing and stay safe i cannot wait to see what you have coming out in the future man and uh, uh just god bless you guys man yeah we'll stay in touch brother thank you so much yes sir be well. Right on, guys. See ya. Cool, cool. LJ, one of the coolest guys in the business, man. He's he's just one of those guys. Everybody l loves that guy. You can never hear a bad word about him. And uh, great performer. So happy to have some time with him today.